uh, Jared with the Daily News. Hope you're doing well. It's been a while. Um, you know, Kentucky game added late, I guess. How did this all come about where you guys originally had the um, Austin P game and get that rescheduled? And you know, what does this opportunity mean for this program? Well, first off, uh, you know, I think it's very obvious yesterday morning when we saw it at Louisville. Louisville had canceled. Um, we felt like then there was a, you know, opportunity maybe for the two programs to get together. Yeah, we had a game contracted, but once we make the, made the call to Austin P, uh, uh, they were very they were very gracious about it. Now for sure they wanted to play the game anyway, so it worked out good from that standpoint. Uh, then Zach had reached out. He reached out to their administration first to just get the ball rolling a little bit. And, you know, and like I said in release, you know, give give Cal and University of Kentucky a lot of credit for stepping up and playing a game. Uh, so it means a lot to you know, our university. But more importantly, too, it means a lot to the state and this community right now. So uh, we all we all understand that. Uh, Kentucky didn't have to play the game, uh, but give them a lot of credit for doing it, for stepping up and, you know, and willing to play us and uh, willing to give back to the state and the community. Coach Muhammad Ahmad with WBKO. Obviously on the surface, like you mentioned, with the COVID cases with Louisville, that's where you guys stepped in. But like you said, after the Louisville game on Saturday, you know, this is just a game and the real world is out there, like you said. So, on, on the outside, it looks like you guys just did this to sort of fill a hole for Kentucky. But is this game really more about the tornado relief and bringing relief to the fans who just need an escape and need help from everything that's been going on? Well, I mean, no question. The game itself is going to help a lot of people. You know, Kentucky's gracious enough to, uh, you know, donate a lot of money to do this. I don't know what the exact figure is. Uh, they can release that, but they didn't have to do that. But their willingness to do that is big. Um, but are we just playing a game for, um, you know, a fundraising event? No, that's probably not the case now. I think it's, it's a case of, uh, it's a great opportunity, two good programs and opportunity that we don't get a chance to play much. Um, and at the same time, just happens to be, can use this game to help uh, in a tornado relief fund. Um, would it came about without that? You know, I don't know that. But I think once we all throw that ball up, you know, we're all going to be thinking about one thing. Coach, hey, coach. Uh, Drew Tennis from Drew Tennis from Rivals. Um, so you know, I was just wondering. You know, you've you know you've coached for Mississippi State. You've you've seen some of these SEC teams. So what do you really know about Kentucky and you know what they're going to be uh, what they're going to be bringing out in Wednesday's game? Well, the first thing you know about it that uh, very few people ever go up in a rubber arena and win. Just remember that. That's the first thing. Uh, number two, um, you know, it's always one of the best basketball environments in the country, year in, year out. Um, and I've said many a time, it's not, it's not the crowd that beats you. It's the, it's the good basketball team they have between those lines most time. And you add that with the crowd. That's what makes them very difficult to beat. Um, so they got a really good team. Um, you know, just beat, basically all you got to say is this, just beat North Carolina 30. So kind of enough said right there. You know, we can chop it up any way we want it. And I'm sure Jerry's got evaluation and analysis of all that, but you know, uh, They've got really good players. Uh, one of the best rebounders in the country, Oscar. Uh, one of the best assist leaders in the country in Wheeler. Uh, then you put really good pieces around it. That's why, you know, they found a way to beat North Carolina on a neutral side game now. It wasn't a home game. Neutral side game, they beat them 30. Coach Maxwell Trink with uh, WNKY. Um, not just Kentucky, but let alone playing a top 10 opponent in the country right now on such short That's notice. How, how do you actually go up and prepare for, for something like that on the short notice? Well, again, Maxwell, you know, 
you know, probably the length of preparation is overrated sometimes. Think about this. Um, you get in a tournament play, you win one night, you play the next night. Uh, you get in a turn conference play, you play back to back to back. Uh, so, you know, having, you know, two days of preparation, we got today. There was a little bit yesterday, not much, but more today, have a walk through tomorrow. Um, you know, and when you get, when you got some guys that, you know, been around a little bit, we got some guys that's been around, some guys are new. At this point of your season, we're all 10 games, 11 games, 12 games in. There's not a whole lot of magic, different people. Um, and for us, it's probably a little different this year than it has been. Uh, our preparation's a little different because we're playing a little bit more zone than normal. You know, and you play a little bit more zone, there's not quite as much preparation. So would you like to have a little, another day maybe? Uh, but again, preparation won't be a factor for, you, for either team today. Coach, Brent Alper with WBKO. I mean, you guys played Louisville on CBS on Saturday, and you're playing Kentucky on ESPN. I mean, you, that's two nationally televised games. How much does this help the exposure of your team and your players? Well, it just doesn't help help the exposure of our team, our players, and our university. Uh, I think it really brings light to our community too, uh, what's going on in Bowling Green. Um, this is just not a something that brings awareness throughout the state. I mean, CBS and ESPN brings recognition throughout the country. Uh, so that's a positive too. Uh, no question uh, from a basketball program standpoint, um, being able to fill in Basically, that Kentucky Louisville slot that you all know across the country is a big slot. December 22nd, not a whole lot going on athletically across the nation. So it'd be a prime time game and probably just coming off a win against the team that we took their place, Louisville. Uh, that's probably some added exposure with that, too. So there's a lot of pauses for our team, our university, uh, community, and state. Coach, you talk about, obviously, how tough it is to play in Rupp Arena, given how long you coached the SEC and Oscar Sheebway and how good he's been. But like you said, you guys have had back-to-back -back Power 5 wins, including a win over a team you haven't beaten in a decade and a half. From a team standpoint in the locker room, how juiced up and excited are they to potentially make a run on, on Wednesday night in Rupp Arena? Well, I mean, again, we, we, we know what a challenge it is. Uh, uh, you don't have to. You don't have to say much uh, how good they are when they just look at one score, beat North Carolina 30 points. You know, any basketball player, and particularly guys from our state, we got three or four guys on our team, three starters uh, from this state. Uh, they understand the rich tradition of Kentucky. Uh, they understand what that program's about. And again, um, uh, we're playing a, just not a rich tradition program. We're playing a really good team. You know, the team wasn't very good. The tradition doesn't matter much. But they traditionally, they're one of the best teams in the country year in, year out. But they've got a really, really good team right now. Hey, Coach. Hey, Coach. So, you know, like looking at, um, you know, looking at how Cameron Justice played last game, you know, how, how big of an impact is he going to be on the, on the court on Wednesday? Well, uh, hey, Drew, he's, he's an impact on the court every night. Um, now, naturally, when he shoots it like that, um, that's really, really, really impactful. But even those nights, he's not making shots. And you guys heard me say this. There's a lot of things he does that doesn't show up on a stat sheet. This is a mentality to anticipate things, see things happening before it happens. His ability to stretch the floor, which opens up maybe more opportunities for Davey, more opportunities on that drive for Jamar. Um, then his ability to pass, which helps get the ball to Luke at the right moment. Hey, Coach. Uh, Jared with the Daily News. Jamar has been good all year, but specifically against these last two, uh, you know, high major teams, he's been really effective. I guess, how do you see him, you know, mashing up with some of the guys that they have or some of what they do uh, in a game like this on Wednesday? Well, he's going, he's going to different, against a different animal uh, tomorrow night now. Hadn't seen one like this. Uh, you know, averaging, what, 16 and 14, leading the country in offensive rebounding, maybe leading in rebounding. Uh, not for sure. Both Dana's on top of it. 
she's gonna become a stat. She's gonna forget Zach. She's gonna know she's gonna know these stats more than Zach soon. But you know, leading the country and those two stats alone, his physique's a little different. Some guys he's gone up against, uh, but you know, um, Jay Moore's been pretty good. I, I think the biggest challenge is uh, we got to get back in transition. Kentucky's really fast in transition. Uh, probably playing a little different right now than they've been playing. Playing a little faster, floor spreading a little bit, uh, trying to get you in transition, and all those guys can really run. And Oscar can really run. He's got a motor. Besides that athleticism he's got, that's why he's leading the country in rebounding. He's got great athletic ability and strength, but he's got a motor too. So those those are going to be different things than Jamar's ever gone up against. So, but you know, it'll be a learning experience for him. Uh, but he's been pretty good too, wherever he's gone up against. Uh, Coach, uh, you know it's a big game because it's Kentucky and it's the biggest game because it's the next one, as you always say. Um, but realistically, too, it's you know the last game before conference play starts. Um, you know, is there anything? extra you're hoping to get out of this before you guys do get into CUSA play? You know, um, yeah, you've been listening. I like that. It is the next game. Um, biggest game of the year because it's next one. This happens to be Kentucky. And, you know, uh, we're just looking to continue to get better. Uh, anytime we can get better against, you know, the best competition, just happens to be a, a in-state school and one of the better programs in history of college basketball and happens to be the last game before Christmas uh, on a big stage. All those things are, are pluses. Uh, end of the day, counts one win and one loss. Coach Keith Farmer at LEX 18. Uh, I'm just curious. I, I know you're a topper, but uh, where you grew up, what was the team that you watched kind of growing up uh, in your area? And, and if it wasn't Kentucky, what's your first memory of Kentucky? Well, Keith, it's easy for me. I've said this many times. When you grew up during my my time of growing up, that's decades ago, um, I didn't know there was any other team in the state at the time when I was a little kid was Kentucky. You know, we'd go out and that's why when you drove around, every barn had a, had a basketball goal nailed to it. We had a basketball go, go mail, nailed on the inside of our barn so we could play in the wintertime. This is what we did. Listen to Kay Wood and, and Ralph. Um, that's what you grew up doing. You worked on the farm, you fished and hunt, and played basketball, and Kentucky was your team. And as you got a little bit older, you started realizing a few other things. You know, I, I was able to cause them a West Kentucky ties with my grandfather, great-grandfather, that I was able to get some exposure to Western Kentucky and understand how good they were. And it was in the 80s when Louisville got good, but you know, most people grew up a long time ago. Hey, it wasn't one team in the state. Uh, that was Kentucky uh, um, at the time. So how about Jerry? Jerry's mic on? Uh, yes. Yeah, I'm listening. Hey, it's, it's scary when Jerry sits there and don't ask a question. It's real scary. He's thinking something. He's putting a pin to something. So, Jerry, I'm not going to let you get off here about asking me a question. You're going to ask me a question? Or no, I'm you're going to ask me a question. <laughs> the bus is waiting uh, on him. You get the last question. John has made a thing about there have been empty seats at home games. I don't know what the attendance will be, we'll see. But how uh, how much of a challenge is the setting, the arena, the size, when it's the normal thing? Well, I've never been up in there where it wasn't a normal thing now. As you well know, it was always packed. So if you're telling me it's not going to be packed, you all need to give us a few more tickets in. <laughs> we can use some extra tickets. But... <laughs> um, Whatever's there, again, I have no idea. How many you expect? What's, what's been your attendance lately? Well, it, they they announce one figure, about 18,000, and uh, the turnstile count is a little less than that, probably 12, 13. Well, I can't, I've never been up there at 12 or 13. 
uh, how that would be uh, at all. Have never seen it that way. So, you know, again, you know, you heard me say earlier, um, it's really not that crowd we're playing, even though when there's 18 or 22,000 up there, it's always that team between the lines. It's always been good. Um, I would I would expect it to be a really good crowd. Um, um, I think it's I think it's an exciting game for both programs. You know, I, I I think your program, your fans would rather see Kentucky play maybe us, Tim. If I'm wrong, see us than maybe go out and play a, a team from out of state somewhere right now. Would you agree with that, Jerry? Yeah, there's a logic to that especially with the tornado aspect. Well, you throw all those things together, um, tornado and the relief fund and the history of our program, and, and maybe just beating Louisville too, add a little bit to that. I would think the Kentucky fans would be excited to see the game. Coach, you know, you, you coached at Mississippi State for 14 years, and, you know, you've been at Rupp Arena every year since then. But I have to ask, so all those games that you've been to at Rep Arena, is there any game that sticks out or any moment from any game that you remember most and why? Man, that's a Jerry. Jerry can have a lot of fun with that one. There's, there's lots of them. There's lots of good and bad memories. Um, uh, there was a lot of games, lots of games. Um, but there's probably one, Jerry, uh, about three minutes ago, saw that blue part and start leaving the arena. About three minutes ago in that game. Jerry, you have to check the date on that. Um, I know Billy was the coach there then. Uh, uh, that would have been early 2000s. Uh, it was a packed house. And about three minutes ago, it's like we were up 16 or 18, and they started leaving out there. And had never seen that happen before, Muhammad. Coach, you, I mean, you guys, Western hasn't played UK since 2001 in the regular season and not since 2012. I mean, if this is a great game and I'm expecting it to be a great game, could you see this being a yearly thing of Western and Kentucky playing? Uh, who am I speaking with? Uh, Brett. Hey, Brett. Um, I mean, being realistic about it, I don't think it'll be a yearly thing. You know, again, like I said early, earlier, give Cal, give Cal um, a lot of props for playing this game. And I've said this many times. I don't dodge this, you know. People want us to play Kentucky every year. We'd love to, but like his eyes, you know, they don't have much to gain by playing us. So they're supposed to beat us. So I get it not wanting to play us, not going to play us. I get all that. And I just look at it as respect. Um, you know, so uh, that's not being disrespectful or in any way. If I'm in Kentucky's shoes, there's some programs maybe that we don't want to play every year because we don't have nothing to gain by playing them. We're supposed to win. So why play the game? So I'm, I'm sure that's the way Jerry and most Kentucky people look at it. So like I said, we're very appreciative of Cal stepping up and playing this game right now.